Good evening and thanks for joining with us again. If this is your first time, we give you an extra welcome. We, if you don't know who we are, we are just simply Christians who believe the Bible, the Word of God, and we believe it to be true. And tonight, we will just be looking to give you a message of hope, a message of, if you've seen the title, certainty, and hopefully bring some certainty to your life in very uncertain times. And we look to do that through the Bible, which we believe to be the Word of God. But before we go any further, we'll just ask for God's help, for we realise we need His help, it's His work, uh, and it's His Word, and we'll ask for His help. We'll just pray. Our God and Father, we come before thee this evening and we thank thee for thy kindness out again towards us another day. We thank thee that even in these uncertain times we can turn to a God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, one who knows the beginning from the end, one who knows the in-between. We thank thee we can turn to one who we know has everything in control. We thank thee from thy word we can turn to it and we know it to be true and from there we can learn and we can uh, receive help and guidance even on, in our lives uh, uh, this week and the days that lie ahead. We thank you there's wor a word of hope, there's a word of truth, there's a word of certainty. And as we turn to the Bible, the word of God again tonight, we pray for help as it will go out again this evening that there may be one or ones who will come into a blessing through knowing what it is to have their sins forgiven, forgiven through faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And those who already know him as saviour, they might just have that, that hope and that certainty rekindled in their heart and in their soul again tonight as we think on these things. We pray for all who are listening in and who may listen in uh, and in the future. We pray that they will know thy hand upon them and they may come into the blessing of salvation. We ask all these things. We do return our thanks in the saviour's name. Amen. We are close to the end of another year. Only a few more weeks to go in 2020 and what a year it's been. I don't think any of us could have imagined the way this year has turned out. The current world situation, the current situation in our land is full of uncertainty. Plans have probably changed even overnight after announcements made by the government last night. And so COVID has turned the world and turned our land and turned probably our lives upside down. We don't really know. There's probably more of an inquiry into where and how it came about. We're not entirely sure what it's doing presently. There's a new strain apparently coming as well or, or currently in our land and we don't know what the future holds. We thought we knew what we were doing for Christmas and then plans have changed overnight. We can't really plan into next year and so things are very uncertain well, I would like to bring a message of certainty tonight. I looked up the word certainty. The Cambridge Dictionary gives a couple of meanings. One of the meanings is something that cannot be doubted. I would like to look at some things that are certain in the Bible, in the Word of God this evening. Something that cannot be doubted. And also, the other meaning that was brought is the state of being completely confident or having no doubt about something. I'd like to tell you a message that should be able to leave you in a state of being completely confident or having no doubt in something. And as we go down through these points tonight, I hope you'll grasp this. And so if I'm speaking of something that is going to bring certainty in, in my life, in your life, where is it I'm going to turn? Well, I'm going to turn to the Word of God. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God we believe the Bible to be inspired of God, it's written of God. You may be questioning that when you think, well, there's, there's numerous books in the Bible. Yes, there is. The simple ones that maybe come to mind is the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. These books were written by these men, but the words given to them were of God, they're God-inspired. And so this evening we're looking to turn to the Word of God because we want to bring certainty, we want to bring God's Word to you tonight. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8 tells us, the Lord Jesus Christ could say here, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. That's the word we're looking to bring to you. That's the Bible that is written by someone who can say that. Someone who was the beginning, is the beginning, knows the beginning and the ending 
and everything in between. Is that not something that you could rely on this evening? Is that not th something you could listen to this evening? First Peter also tells us, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. The verses from the Bible I'm going to bring to you tonight is it's the words of the Lord. It's words that endure forever. And that verse goes on to say, and this word which by the gospel is preached unto you. There's nothing that I can really bring to you this evening of myself or anything that I can say, but my thoughts and my remarks are based on the word of God. That is all we can bring to you this evening. That is all that can bring you certainty. That is all that can bring you hope. And so the word of the Lord endureth the Bible, endureth forever, and it stood the test of time and still stands. I have a copy in my hand even tonight. Many have tried to get rid of it. Many have tried to remove it or burn it or many different things or banned it but it's still here today and it will endure forever. Before I get into my remarks, Romans chapter 10 and 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in a message of certainty tonight, there is no other book that I can turn to other than the word of God. That's the only thing I can turn to and bring to you this evening. If I'm going to think of certainties and bring some certainty to your life this evening, it's only the word of God that we can turn to. And some of the verses I've read already this evening are found in the word of God. I would like to look at past certainties, things that are certain, things that have happened in the past. Present certainties, things that we know to be true today. But most of all, to bring certainty to your life, future certainties. When we go back to the definition, I would like you to be able to be in a state of being completely confident or having no doubt about something. And so, the first point I would like to bring, and I suppose it's maybe topical, we're coming very close to Christmas, and every year we maybe think of this, but maybe you've not really thought in great depth of this. The first point, the first certain fact I would like to think about is that the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world. Christ came into the world. The Bible tells us that, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, I've not got specific readings because I've got so many verses that I'd like to go through as we go down this. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 says, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. What a wonderful truth. That's a certainty. That's a fact. I hope you believe it this evening. As Christmas comes round every year and we think of we think of the Lord Jesus Christ being born in Bethlehem, or maybe it's been lost over the many years, and the Christmas presents and the other things, the Christmas trees and decorations have really taken over. I wonder if this year you'll think of Christmas and think of Christ and think of the fact that he came into the world. The verse says it's a faithful saying, it's true, it's something that can be accepted. It's worthy of all acceptation. It's worthy by all to be accepted. There's no category where you need to be in or no age you need to be to be able to accept this statement. And it's, it's worthy of your full acceptation. And what is it? That Christ Jesus came into the world. We've thought many times that Christ was born in Bethlehem. And maybe that's as much as it means to you. Maybe it's just a, a, a glancing thought. And maybe at Christmas time it lasts for a few weeks. And, and then everything's packed up and you forget all about it. Maybe you've not really thought much of it at all. Well, the first fact is that Christ came into the world, and it is of great meaning. You may ask why it's important, and why is it any different from anybody else that's been born? Well, my second point, my second certainty, the second fact I'd like to think this evening is that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what makes it different. It was no ordinary birth. If you've been listening to any services, we had a, a Christmas service this afternoon online, and if you listened into that, you'd learn something of that. He was, the Lord Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin. He was spotless and pure. He was holy. And that is because he is the Son of God. John chapter 6 and verse 69 says, the people that were there on that day, they would say, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They believed. There was no doubt in their minds. They were completely sure that he was the Christ, he was the Son of God. And so that child in the manger, that baby that is portrayed in the Christmas cards and the nativity scenes, have you ever thought who he really was? Have you really thought why he came? He did come. 
and he is the Son of God. Not only that, First Timothy chapter 3 and 16, it tells us, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world and received up into glory. Not only was he the Son of God, but he was God manifest in flesh. That was no ordinary baby in the Bethlehem's manger. And he can mean so much more to you this evening. So that's what's special about the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ came. That's what makes him different from everyone else. He is the Son of God. And you think, well, why is he different from you and I? Well, the psalmist tells us in Psalm 51, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Millions have been born, but not in this way. Millions have been born in sin. And we'll think more about that in my next point. And so as we see the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ came and that he is the Son of God and that's what sets him apart, Hebrews tells us where he came from. Hebrews 2 and 9 says, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So now we're starting to see that he came and who he was, the Son of God, and we've thought something, and we'll think more of the reason why he came. There was a reason why he came, and there's a reason why he was different. There's a reason why the Son of God came to the manger at Bethlehem. Is it not amazing that the Son of God did come? Are you grasping it this evening, who he is? Not just one to be thought about at a time of year or a season. Someone to think more of, something, someone who can make a change in your life. And so we've thought of him coming. The first verse we read... It would say that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That is something of why he came, to save sinners. You may be asking, well, who are the sinners? Well, my third certainty, this is a certain fact, and it's one that you may not like to hear, but it's one you've got to come to terms with if you're wanting to have the certainty that I'm going to speak about in a minute or two. We need to live up to this fact. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 is very clear. It says, for... All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That Holy One, God, God is perfect. God can have no sin in his presence. And this verse tells us that we've all fallen short of that perfect standard. If you cast your mind back to the very start of the Bible in Genesis, it tells us why we have, we have Adam to thank for that. Romans again, just further on a, a couple of chapters, it tells us why. Romans 5 and 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Away back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were, were made and were placed in a garden. I would suggest they were made to be perfect. Genesis 1 and 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. What a place that must have been for Adam and Eve and in a perfect garden. But there was rules. There was one specific rule. They could eat of anything in the garden, but not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if you think back to the story, you know that Satan come in, the devil come in and tempted Eve and could question, hath God said? This would lead to Eve taking of the fruit and, and giving it to Adam. And so Adam took of the fruit and simply an act of disobedience, sin, entered the world. We like to classify sins. We like to think of horrible, heinous sins. And we maybe like to make ourselves feel better by saying that I've never done any of them. Sin entered the world through simple disobedience. I don't think any one of us could, could say that we've never been disobedient. From the youngest child up, from the youngest child saying no to a parent or not doing what they're told to the older generation as you receive your, as you get a driver's license, the, the speed limit says 30, you do 31 miles an hour and a 30, you're, you're disobeying the law. And so all have sinned. It's as easy as what we've thought of there. And so why did the Lord Jesus Christ come? Why did the Son of God come? Well, the first verse tells us it's to save sinners. 
You may be asking, saved from, from what? Well, another certain fact, and it's maybe another one that we don't like to, to think of, but there's a certainty of judgment ahead. The Bible is clear on that as well. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 could tell us, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Have you thought of the after this? Have you given any thought of what happens after life? It's easy to think on the first part of that verse. It's easy to, to agree with the first part of that verse. It's appointed unto men once to die. I suppose that's, what would you call it, the circle of life. You're born, you live, you die. It's easy to accept that. But what about the last part of the verse? Can I challenge you this evening? But after this, the judgment. We've thought about the fact that we've all sinned. Well, sin brings punishment. Sin means that there is a punishment for the actions that we've done. Even in this current day, there is, there is punishment, there is judgment for wrong actions. Thinking of the speeding again, you speed, you get caught. There's lack points in your license, three points or more, and a fine. There's punishment for sin. Well, when it comes to sin, in God's eyes, there is great punishment. We think back to Noah's day, a simple story that you've maybe heard in Sunday school. Noah, the, the men of the day in Noah's day, they had sinned and their sin was so horrendous to God that he decided that he was going to judge the world. But he didn't just come in straight away in judgment. He, he had a plan and Noah built an ark. And during that time, the people had opportunity to, to listen what, to what Noah had to say and to watch and to learn. And, and they, they had access into that ark. They had a way of escape. But in the end, when it came time and God shut the door... There was only Noah and his family saved, and in that time, the judgment fell on the world. Well, there's judgment ahead for each one of us if we know not the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour. The verse is very clear, and is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. But God is a God of mercy, God is a God of grace, and so there is a plan of salvation. There's a way of escape from the, from the judgment Although Hebrews 2 and 3 does say, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There's a judgment ahead. There's a way of salvation that we're about to come on to. But how will you escape if you neglect this way? So what is the way of salvation? Well, another certain fact that we can't get away from. The Lord Jesus Christ died. He was buried and he rose again. Again, another verse from the Bible, or two verses from the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, it would say in the middle of the verse, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that is just the Word of God, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So I thought in the certain fact that he came, and he came to save the world from their sins. And I thought here that... He died for our sins. And so according to the word of God, we can rely on this again. It's the word of God that Christ died for our sins. What that means, and you maybe think to the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ died, that it was the Romans or it was the soldier or it was the men of that day that put them in a cross. Well, that is true. But if you read on a bit further, there was a time where there was three hours of darkness. In those three hours of darkness, that is when God laid on his own son the punishment for sin. So there is a judgment for sin, there's a punishment for sin, but there's a way of escape for you this evening, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he died and he bore the punishment for your sin. And you can come into the good of that this evening. There was a question asked of the Philippian jailer a long time ago in the Bible, Acts chapter 16, 31 tells us about it. He could say, what must I do to be saved? The answer was really simple. And it comes again, even this evening, really simple to us. And Paul and Silas, it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. So we've got some certain facts. The Lord Jesus Christ came. He was born as a baby in Bethlehem's manger. He was special because he was the son of God. There's certain fact that we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God can't have sinned in his presence, so we can't be in his presence. But he came to save. Save from what? 
the judgment ahead. And how can he save? Because he died on the cross and bore the punishment for sin. He was buried, he rose again, and he ascended back to heaven. So we are speaking this evening about someone who's living, someone who is in heaven. This is where I can bring a message of real certainty. If we're thinking about the fact there's judgment that lies ahead, we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ died and we can have our sins forgiven. And then what does that mean for us? If we're saved, if we've had our sins forgiven, what does that mean? Well, the Lord Jesus, when he went away, he said before he he went, he said, John chapter 14 and verse 3, he said, and if I go, which he did, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. This is some certainty that I can bring you when we think of that definition, even just from the dictionary, the state of being completely confident or having no doubt about something, you can have full certainty in this fact that if you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you know what it is to have your sins forgiven, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. He has gone and he says he will come again. The Bible speaks about, okay, an occasion when there will be two in a field, one taken, one left. Or two at a mill grinding, one taken, one left. I wonder what your circumstances are this evening. Do you have friends, relatives, family who are saved and you're not? One taken, one left. Would that be you? Would you be left if the Lord Jesus Christ had to come back? And he's only coming back to take those who have believed. He's only coming back to take his own with him. Would that be you or would you be left? Just Further on from those verses that speak about one taken and one left, it tells us it'll come as a thief in the night. He'll not announce when he's coming. It'll be so quick. Tonight might be your last opportunity. Have you thought about that? This is great certainty that you can have in your life to know that if the Lord Jesus Christ comes again for his own, that you will go to be with him. But when we think about the verse that we thought of just a minute ago, that it is appointed unto men once to die. That is true. And that is true for the Christian too. For those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is many who have died and there is many who will die. The only way that will not die is if the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to the air to take us to be with himself. This is great certainty. This will leave you uh, in no doubt of, of something that will happen. My last point is that the Christian will be with Christ. Those who have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will be with him. Philippians tells us about this. The verse says, For I am be straight betwixt two, having a desire to, part, to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. In the world today, we have so much uncertainty. In the year that lies ahead, in the weeks that lie ahead, we don't know what we were allowed to do, or, or what we won't be allowed to do, or where we'll be. Would it not be great to have some certainty in your life? Would it not be great to know that come what may, you know what it is to have Christ as your saviour, you know what it is to, that if you have to leave this world, that you will be with him? Or if you have to come again to the earth to take his own to be with himself, that you'll go with him? This is a message of certainty this evening. This is a message that leaves you no doubt Would you like the security and the certainty of your future? Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ this evening. Maybe this Christmas as we think of the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming into the world, we might think more about it. Think think seriously about it. What does he mean to you? Who, Who is he? He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He is God manifest in flesh. Remember, And you need to come to terms with this because if you don't come to terms with this, you can go no further with an experience with God. You have sinned. We have all sinned. We have come short of God's standard. And because of our sin, there is judgment that lies ahead. But just like any any, uh, sin or any wrongdoing, there's punishment. But Christ died, was buried, and rose again. And when he died on the cross at Calvary, he bore the punishment for your sin and for my sin. And so that punishment has been paid. That debt has been paid. 
And tonight you can cling to the good of that if you just but believe on him. Just as the verse says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What an assurity it is, what a certainty it is to know that if the Lord Jesus Christ comes again tonight, that you would be you would go to be with him. Or should you close your eyes in this life that you will be with Christ? I'm glad I have that assurance. Does that assurance take away from the uncertainty of the things round about? Not completely, no. But it is great to know that, come what may, it is well with my soul. There's a song in our hymn book, a hymn in our hymn book, and the words of it came to me the night I was saved, the night I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I could put my head on a pillow and I could say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It's great assurance to know, it's great certainty to know that to die it is to be with Christ, and as the verse says, to be with Christ, which is far better. There was a funeral in this hall just a couple of weeks ago, and the person was one who gathered with us uh, at the assembly hall in New Stevenson, and although there was tears and there was sadness, deep down there's joy, because for him, this is his experience now, to be with Christ, it's far better. And standing in a funeral of someone like that, there is tears, they will be missed. He is missed. But it's great to know that there is certainty in the fact that he's with Christ. And on one day, when the Lord Jesus does come back to the earth for his own, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, and we will all be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why not tonight bring some assurance, uh, sorry, bring some certainty to your life? In very uncertain times, why not sort out your future? I'm not talking about next year or the next again. I'm talking about further, or maybe not so further ahead for some. But I'm talking about when you close your eyes on this life, that you're able to know what it is to have, uh, to be with Christ, which is far better. Thanks for joining with us tonight, and we'll just close with a word of prayer and trust that even at this season you'll think of the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming and who he really is and what he could mean to you and bring some certainty in these uncertain times. Shall we pray? Lord God and Father, we thank thee for thy Son, the Lord Jesus. We thank thee for his coming into this world. We are amazed as we think of him as God manifest in flesh. Where he came as he bypassed the station of angels and could be born as a baby in Bethlehem's manger, we realise that when he was born, he was born with a purpose that he might go to the cross at Calvary. We thank thee for one who was holy and spotless and pure, and one who never sinned, and one who was able to go to the cross. And there, in those three hours of darkness, he could bear the punishment for my sin and for the sin of the world. And we thank thee that even tonight, if anyone comes to him in faith and in repentance, they can know what it is to have sins forgiven because of that death on the cross at Calvary. We pray for all who are listening in this evening. We pray that some will uh, will think on these things, will think of the, the baby in Bethlehem's manger, but think more of who he was and why he came and can have that assurance that come what may, it is well with their soul and know what it is to have that certainty of being with Christ, which is far better. We ask for a blessing on all who have listened in and all who will listen as we ask all these things, returning our thanks in the Saviour's name.